mainly deal with the big linear infrastructures. So that's <laughs> railways, roads, water provision, um, wastewater treatment, power, ICT systems, that sort of thing. So it's the, the big infrastructure that is, if you like, the kind of the arteries of our cities and between our cities. So the Economist back in 2010 um, did an article on, on superstructures and, and adding sensors into them. And they, they posed the very sensible question that if a car can be made smart enough to know when the oil is low or a brake light has failed, why can't we do the same for bridges, tunnels and buildings? Obviously, if it was a simple challenge, people would have done it before. It's not a simple challenge, but it's a very good question. And that's the area that our centre operates in. The great opportunity that presents itself now is that with the kind of rush of development in sensor technology, ICT technology and so forth, there's a real opportunity to start to sensor up our systems and, and ensure that we have resilient infrastructure going into the future. So in CSIC, we divide this problem into four main categories. Um, starting at the bottom of this sort of pyramid, we have sensors and data collection. Um, as has been mentioned several times before, you need to have good data for any of this to work, um, or at least you need to know how bad your data is. So that's one of the areas that we look at. And one of our challenges is we work in a very chaotic environment. Um, we're working outdoors a lot of the time. It's a, an environment in which the public operates a lot. So things are very unpredictable in terms of how our data is being gathered. Once you've got the data, you've got to analyse and interpret it. And that's really the main area that we're all looking at today. And once you've analysed and interpreted it, you need to use it to make decisions as Professor Cheng said just now. And the sort of decisions we're looking at are how do we manage our assets? Now again, that one of the big challenges we have in our, our realm is that our assets are very long lived. We might be managing assets that have been around for 100 years, or we might be building assets which might be expected to be around for another 100 years. So we've got a, an extremely long time frame that we need to gather data over and understand that data. So our centre has instrumented a huge amount of infrastructure and a number of our industry partners are starting to do this for real in industry as well. So we're starting to generate some volumes of data. And the important thing is we use a whole range of different sensors to do this. Some of them are individual point sensors that we stick on things. Some of them are um, fibre optics. So it's a bit like a, having a long piece of string that you drape over your structure. It's a 2D thing in a 3D space. Um, some of them are m monitoring and measuring how people are moving around a space. Some of them are using mobile phone sensors. There's a whole range of things we can do to gather data, and it's all different types of data. So our main challenge, if you think about the kind of the Vs of, of big data, really is variety. And that variety is, is, if you like, a physical variety. So position, are we measuring position in one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions with scans? Um, location, which is a different thing. Where is that sensor? <laughs> um, the temperature, the humidity, we might be measuring acceleration to monitor movements. We might be storing images to either calculate differential movement or to look for changes in a structure or for any number of things. But it's not just about the, f the physical variety of what we're measuring. It's also about the time variety. Because we have assets which last for hundreds of years, we might be measuring some things, for, for example, on a construction site, many times a second. If you're looking at the stability of a wall where you're digging a trench, you need to know immediately if there's something going to happen with that and it's going to collapse. On the other hand, some sensors you might be happy that they report once a minute, once a week, once a month, or even once a year when you're looking at things that are going to be changing over the long lifetime of that asset. So we've got variety in two kind of different axes. We also have the challenge of veracity, both is what I'm gathering right now true or have I got some faulty sensors in the field, but also over time. So as we get more and more distant from the point in time at which that data was gathered, how much faith do we have in it now? Finally we use it for different purposes. So there's the responsive purpose in terms of I'm monitoring things on my construction site um, or I'm operating my railway and I need to make sure that things are flowing appropriately. There's, if you like, what I call the, the reflective purpose. So we're still in, the, in, the, in this sort of dynamic mode, but what can I learn from last week's operation or the previous piling operation that I did in construction to improve the next time I do that? And then there's the much longer term piece, which is what condition is my asset in and how much longer can I operate it for, for example, before I need to go in and maintain it. So we're kind of, we're cutting that, that time axis in different ways for different purposes. So in the future, what we're hoping to do is working with this sort of graph data approach, apply some machine learning algorithms, um, such as deep learning techniques to extract the features and correlations. And then as I said, develop this way of doing real time prediction on infrastructure behavior based on those statistical correlations and relationships and having them feeding into each other in order to, and this is our center's tagline, transform the future of infrastructure through smarter information.